Welcome back, y'all, to another episode of Hip Hop Babies. We back, you know, we got another album review for y'all. You know, ben Staples, Dark Times, you know, Summertime. We all having fun, but you ever thought, you know, you gotta sit and ponder your existence? Reminisce, just a little bit. For the one time, see how it was deadly. You know, I got my boy Ray with me, you know, when we about to get into this album. What's the opening note, you know? Close your eyes and swing. Brought me back those wind chimes, the breeze. Sitting on a swing. Yeah, reminded me of being outside, man. You know, whether it's closing your eyes and swinging on the swing set, right? Or it's closing your eyes and swinging on the person that's messing with you, you know what I'm saying? And um, one thing Vince Staples is really good at that I think he's underrated in storytelling or the ability to put certain sounds or say things in a certain way that bring up old feelings. And this project is the perfect example of that. Just because um, personally, I'm not connecting with everything, but I'm connecting with some of the messages and some of the themes of this project. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of great messages in here. I mean, go to that first track, Black and Blue. I really like that chorus on there. Talk about a lot of stuff that, you know, he's just dealing with on a, on a day-to-day basis, you know, whether it's whatever, you know, he's just doing on the streets, talking about his people, you know, real food stamp babies, you know, products of poverty, but then, you know, they got choppers and luxury vehicles looking like Saudi Arabians, bro, like the sharp contrast in the community, kind of just going into like what happened to all the people that we was looking up to, you know, what happened to Tupac, what happened to Nipsey. What's it like to be, you know, black and blue? It's crazy how it connects to the, like, topic matter of the songs. People usually just put, like, oh, this is the chorus. That's why I'm going to name the song. No, it's got, like, a deeper meaning on every single one of these. Close Your Eyes and Swing, Double Entendre, Black and Blue. You're getting, you know, beat down, but you're also black and you're sad, so you're blue. He got an elite pen. Probably from hanging out with Earl so much, you know. Don't want to give him too much credit, but, you know. Yeah, you're right. How I first heard of Vince Stables was through Earl's sweatshirt and, like, Shine Cold Chain series. Specifically, I think Shine Cold Chain 2. Kind of tapped into one, but that was a little bit around the time Earl dropped his mixtape that had Vince on there. Ever since then, Vince has been on my radar just because of how talented he is. He's able to paint a picture and do it in a witty way. That's why he's been crowned by, I think, Complex as one of the funniest people on the internet because he's able to connect with people, even people who haven't been through what he's been through. I think Black and Blue, even Government Cheese, you know, he's sampling himself on Blue Suede and talking about hiding the unhappiness. You know, he's made it. He signed the Def Jam. He's been on there for a few years. He's a free agent now, right? And now he's figured out that he's made it for a few years and he survived through what he survived through. It's still a lot to do. And that's a big message on this album, I think. Whether it's the messaging in hip hop, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, what rappers talk about, whether that's women, whether that's just the energy in general. You know, I think he approached it in a way on this album that was really interesting. You know, I haven't heard, especially from a West Coast rapper, you know, approaching these topics. Going back to Government Cheese, he's talking about his homie calling him and he can only ex- express the positive things because, you know, his homie's telling him, yo, I saw you on TV, you know, I'm in prison. He only has 15 minutes on the phone with this person, you know, because it's like a collect call and he only can express certain things. So he, he limits what he can say because really, even though he's made it, there's still some bad stuff going on. A line that uh, really hit me was, um, keep the fade low, can't let the graves grow. Just the titles of these tracks alone, you know, government cheese, government cheese used to be a thing that poor people used to get um, from the government, whether it was uh, government assistance and they would give them government cheese. And this was a brick of cheese that certain people were like, yo, this is some good cheese or this is some cheese that, you know, we love to eat and it helps with our food. But really, that's just the government giving you what they can give you. And you taking it and working with it, right? But really, is that really a positive thing? But to him, it was a positive thing. And I think moments like this on this album make it special. He's done this before, especially for Ramona Park, Broke My Heart, and other projects recently, the self-titled. He's gotten introspective. This was a big leap. Different level on the previous projects, um, particularly Ramona Park. He's had introspective moments where he, he'll be saying stuff about hanging from the block is the same as hanging from the ceiling fan, you know, like, and he'll have those flash in the pan moments, but I felt like a lot of the times 
the songs on here were more like put together and like grouped together in a way where, you know, he's talking about a lot of the similar things. There was a lot of moments of like brevity and like lightness on the other albums, but this one was like kind of, you know, the most revealing out of all of them. Dark Times, you know, it's it's hard to open up about him. So it's obvious that he's going to like be the most open and the most, you know, lyrical on this one. I love songs like Magic. I love songs like Lemonade, the FM album. Like he's got great just songs in general. I never felt like he was like the type of guy to do all that. You know, he's just, he's kind of a guy who wants to do more like a good last note for sure. You know, definitely mm -hmm. shows where he's going to go. I feel like as an artist the most, and we can see him like propelling off of this into something better when he doesn't have that industry to support and he's doing it all independent he's building a name for himself man i mean y'all seen the vince staples show that shit fire yeah the vince staples show all that you know vince staples has really branched out he's a witty guy and it comes down his raps um and that's one of the things i like about him a lot you know sometimes you know when you're from an area that's not the most privileged people expect less from you and vince staples has always been able to rise above that whether that in his rapping ability or that's from his life. Sometimes, you know, you, you have people around you. You have um, a lot of things around you that can distract you. And sometimes you have to rise above it. And that's why I love songs like Little Homies, right? You have moments like that where he's like, life's hard, but I go harder. And he's going really into it as far as like, you know, stay out the streets. All this shit is around you. Don't you feel the pressure? Don't you feel the pressure to make money? Don't you feel the pressure to um you know do what others are doing around you right but at the end of the day you have to be yourself and fight through it you know that's the messages i take from songs like that right what really hits home um atafe you know i saw their names hopefully i'm saying that right but atafe is another example like that that's the best hook on this album ghetto is what made him who he is but he's an outlier you know he stands out whether that's now and i think maybe even in the past you know he's always been moving how he's moving, right? In the ghetto, he's a Martian. I love the line on this song, everybody's gang, 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 till it gets bad. In the ghetto is a mismatch. You ain't never finna win that. Nah, right? I think, you know, where I'm from, we come from hard times. I and mean, that makes a mismatch, you know? That makes it to where I'm able to overcome these certain things, but I could be, I could be just like you are, but I come from a certain area where it's like, I had to deal with these things, so I'm gonna always be better. I'm always gonna have this chip on my shoulder. And that's why we have a mismatch. And that's real, bro. Like, you see people who make it way easier, right? You see people who make it just off the strength of what their family has or whatever, um, things that are brought to the table that make it easier for them. But then you have people like Vince who made it from the hood, who, who made it from um cripping and certain uh, certain negative things that people perceive in their environment right but he's obviously smart enough to maneuver and he's whether it's in this label or whether it's in the hip-hop realm and people like him that's why he's still selling solid numbers he might not be the biggest artist but he's still able to um sell and do these and make impactful projects even though um he's not getting the most push especially from Def Jam at this point now that he's cut off the label this album didn't get as much push as I think it should have it has some catchy songs on here and he's rapping but he's not making like unapproachable un radio worthy music on here he's got so many on here like messages and shit that are crazy. Like, I feel like Shame on the Devil passed up on a little too quick. Shame on the Devil. I ain't trying to pass on that one. I'm just but spreading. the devil being like the lust and like the wants and like the stuff that you want, ruining like the sweet moments of life, trying to make amends with your homie, but you know, you'd rather do some crazy shit. You'd rather burn out, crash out over it, you know, or Vince over here talking about he knows some girl that'll come up and give him pussy before she give him a hug, bro. But it goes into the environment you're from makes the music you make. And I love that he touched on this, you know, he goes into, you know, just like hip hop in general, you know, there's certain moments on here where he says like, he has women voices and he says like, oh yeah, like they don't really listen to hip hop because of what they talk about. But really, yeah. and when he goes into this album, it's like, really that's a reflection of the stories and certain things I've been through. And that goes into like Liars and Justin. Liars for an interlude, really, I love that interlude. I've heard that on the internet before, but 
sound or using that speech where basically the woman is saying like, you lie to this, you lie to the worker, you lie to your boss, especially as a black man, right? You, you, you put on this facade, like you're happy or you put on your white voice and you're like, yeah, you know, I'm happy. Da, da, da. We, you know, da, da, da. how you doing? Da, da, da. But she says when he comes home, puts all that negative energy out because he's really showing how he really feels. I think that was really impactful. And then it goes into Justin, right? Where basically he's saying, I trusted this woman. I um, was willing to get in a relationship with her. But at the end of the day, she put me in a place where I was paranoid. I didn't know what was going on. I thought she was real. There's another man in the picture. And then she makes me pretend to be her cousin. And he has to deal with that because at the end of the day, he was, this is a relationship. This is someone I like. But she's playing the game. She's playing both sides. And then a dude pops up. He's about to shoot the dude. He realizes like, oh, I got to play my role. As a man, I got to I gotta put on this face like, oh, yeah, I'm a cousin because I don't want it to be tension between me and this other dude, right? That interlude on Liars is a famous interview with James Baldwin and Nikki Giovanni, you know, two prolific, you know, black thinkers talking about, you know, just the state of the black woman and the black man and, you know, lie to me so that, you know, I feel better. And this is... An example of how somebody might have taken that and just took it to an extreme on him, you know, because she lying to her man, you know, just to make his life feel better, you know, she lying to make him feel better. And Vince just got to be a witness in that moment. And that's a hell of funny, terrible situation to be in. Yes. But he was feeling this girl, bro. Listen to the lyrics, bro. You know, like he going into like this intense detail about like you know all the stuff that makes him feel like he's gonna go for something and then she takes that lion shit to heart bro it's tragic sometimes you know i think it was a vulnerable moment i think there's a bunch of that on this album right but to me and with the second half to certain parts of this album right i feel like he's trying to make that connection you know i've been through what i've been through and this is why i rap the way i rap and this doesn't explain some of the things I say. It kind of was like, this is real life. This is what certain people deal with. This is what I deal with. Even songs like radio, right? I mean, this is a different subject, right? This isn't talking about that specifically, but this is a moment of him saying like, I miss these moments. I miss riding down the radio hearing Big Boy promote certain rap songs that were really with the culture, right? And it's not like that no more. It's dying. It's like Vince, if you, if you listen to his music, he's obviously a fan of hip hop. He's obviously, radio to me was just like, man, even me, like I miss riding around with my pops, riding around with my mom, just listening to the radio and hearing certain songs. And then he goes into how he heard Below the Heavens, like an underground hip hop album, and that changed things. And then he heard how his sister was listening to certain music and that changed things. And then he got into a relationship and she said, like, she doesn't really listen to hip hop because of the misogyny, right? And then he broke up with her and then he was going through periods where he wasn't listening to hip hop because of that because he was thinking in a certain mind state. And then, As a last album on your record label, I didn't expect them to go this way. And I think this proves that Vince maybe has always had issues with his label or maybe Vince has always wanted to do this. Because even the cover, right, you see the the noose kind of on there. Yeah. And that's a reference to Shine Cold Chain. He samples Blue Suede. That's a reference to one of his projects when he first got signed and his first big single, right? He's grown so much. He's learned so much. And this is him trying to put it all together before he takes that next step or that transition to being independent. And that's what made this album, I think, hit for me because you have to take what you learn and continue to move on. Vince is going through that in his own life and i think it was the perfect time to drop this it's been getting play it's been out for a little bit right but like i go back to it especially when i want to listen to this some really good hip-hop vince he made he got him one he's always had his moments but like and he's always dropped some really good projects but like this put it all together for me it's been a minute watching this development for like seeing like what he's gonna do, what kind of route he's gonna take. And I feel like this is kind of culmination, it's the funnel point of all the music to see what he's gonna do next, you know, when he's got just relying on himself, you know, like what is he gonna bring to the table as a rapper? And this perspective is, you know, invaluable. The certain things that he talks about, you know, like you saying, like bringing up 
the reflection of like misogyny and like hip hop is like something that really like makes you like think about like your values and okay is this like really productive or positive and that's a typical growth of a normal person you know just somebody who values listen to other people's opinions on things that make them feel certain ways and you know and then realizing you know you got to do it your own way or even if there are these flaws about you know something that i love can i still love it and that's really powerful right so perfect point and that's what i get especially at the ending of the album santi gold and she's talking about how like um she listened to the album she's talking about how like He's keeping it real. And we talked about how he said it's easier for a girl to come over and give you pussy than it is for her to come over and give you a hug, right? That's his perspective. He's been set up before. He's been lied to before. And we've been through this before, you know, whether it was NWA, you know, people always come in and say like, you know, man, this rap is this. We don't need this spread. But really, that's their life. Like, that's why they have this negative viewpoint. You know, I didn't grow up that way. You know, I've had good men, you know, thank the Lord, you know, going to little homies, right? You know, little homies kind of reminded me of my pops, like telling me like, don't do that. You know, don't give game. Like basically like I went through this. This is what I had to do. You don't have to do that. Like keep your head up. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's just, like, I don't know how he did it. Cause after Ramona Park broke my heart, I was kind of like, man, this is a great album. Where is he going to go from here? And I think it was in my top 15. This is probably going to be higher in there just because I feel like he did that and he took it to the next level. Free Man was the big song about that. You know, he's out of Def Jam. Don't be no crab in the bucket. Be a crip in the Ritz. Like, he's made it. He's crossed over. He's talked about being a crab in the bucket or that crab in the bucket mentality. He's made it from that. And he's going to keep growing from that. You know, I'm excited to see where he goes from here because Vince has found a way to market himself and talk about what he wants to talk about within a label structure so now that he's off that where is he gonna go with it now that i'm out of this confined space where can i go with it even though it's called dark times i think it's mainly just called dark times maybe because the situations we're in you know as a as a, as a society it also just like it's fear because he has to go through being on his own again there's a lot of uncertainty there and maybe that's the dark times. And also just reflecting on the dark periods in his life. But, like, you're back figuring it out. It, it is about, like, you know, perspective of you, like, getting into it. Stuff you get drawn to is not always your choice, you know. It, it's just, it's all just human experience, you know. You just get shown things. Especially as somebody like us. Like, we started listening as, like, kids and shit. Like, I didn't know that Too Short was talking about pimping. I didn't know what pimping was. It's just, like, it slapped people that I was around was playing it. And it was cool. And then, like, you want to think critically about it later, go ahead and think critically about it later. And, you know, you can listen to some grown-up rap. You can listen to Dark Times, bro. Like, he's had to please enough people with the music he's made to this point enough. How he had a lot of, like, brevity and, like, light songs. But he also had those dark flashes. I felt like the dark flashes were, like, the real stuff he really wanted to talk about. Some of those, like, hits or, like, you know, Lighter songs, they might have been forced by the label. They want a certain mix of songs. I'm looking forward to first lane he getting into off of this thing, and then he's going to get into something else off of it. I'm ready, bro. I'm ready. Yeah. You know? I pointed out Atafe earlier. You know, he says, um, I dropped Big Fish Theory because it's been weeks since. You know, that's what people think because he tried to do the experimental. People say robot music. You know what I'm saying? He tried to do something different. Maybe that was the label. They were the label saying, you know, we need you to be more accessible. So maybe get over these electronic beats. Bro, maybe he did it mm -hmm. and they and the reception was so bad that he couldn't do nothing again, you know? Yes. Like, Don't get it twisted. I think Big Fish Theory is a good album. And he even said, like, I was trying to, you know, make music that connected with everybody, but still keep it tapped into the hood. But I understand why a lot of people don't like that. That's not maybe what people expect from Vince. And it's dope to see that he's grown and he learned from that. I ain't gonna lie, this might be in my top five. I've been really messing with this project. Let's get into the top three, right? It's Too Fit is my first track. Um, that was a great track. For number two, Little Homies. And then number three, I'm gonna go Government Cheese. What's your three, bro? Got It Too Fit as well. It Too Fit, Black and Blue, for sure. And... Little homies. Like. Shout out to Kilo Kush. When I went to go see him for the Prima Donna tour, she was the opener. And she's really talented too. Thank y'all so much for rocking with this review. 
Thank you, Ben Staples, for giving us something to talk about. Appreciate it, man. Make sure y'all follow us. Subscribe. Leave a like. Leave a comment, man. Tell somebody to watch this. That being said, man, I'm going to pass it off to my boy, Ray. Thank y'all so much. Vince, man, if you watch it, man, appreciate the album. All the producers on this, we I appreciate your work. A lot of the beats on here were a highlight. Y'all did y'all thing. You're a free agent. Hopefully, you keep dropping like this. Keep challenging the norm as far as West Coast hip-hop. Everybody watching, thank you for watching. And with that being said, peace. peace.